Hi, doing a quick little video on exponential growth and decay. So here we go. We've got exponential growth. Let's see, it's determined by, or the quick function is the base of the function will be written as f of x is equal to some base b to the x power, okay? So uh, if we're doing a transformation, now we'll have some f of x or some y value is equal to some base b is equal to x minus h, where x minus h is responsible for the horizontal shift, and k would be responsible for a vertical shift. Yes, yeah, so b in this case is greater than 1, so we're dealing with a growth model. Something is growing exponentially, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, 5, and so forth. x minus h, if we set it equal to 0, that will give us the horizontal shift. The k value is the vertical shift, okay? Now, if we want a decay model, then what we're looking at is f of x is equal to 1 over b to the x, where b is actually in between 1 and 0. In other words, b is some fraction. Now, again, you can have a fraction in like 1 half, but you can also have a fraction like 3 halves. If we have a fraction like 3 halves, that does not fit into this criteria. 3 halves is actually greater than 1. So be careful when you see just fractions. We want to make sure that it is in between 1 and 0. Domain and range for most of these functions, the base functions, domain will be all real numbers, or x is an element of negative infinity to positive infinity, not included. And the range will, for the base function, uh, of both will be y is an element of 0 to infinity. Now, those will change given the uh, shifts up and down vertically. All right, so let's look at our first example here. It says, sketch the base graph of f of x equals 2 to the x, and g of x is 2 to the x minus h. So we first graph the f of x in blue. And we have, this is the blue, so we first build an xy chart. And I always use the same three numbers, negative 1, 0, and 1. Why? Because 1 gives you the fraction of the number, 0 always gives you a 1 as a y value, and then 1 always gives you the number back itself. So it makes it really simple to graph. So if I go to plug those numbers on the xy coordinate, xy plane, then I'll just go negative 1 will give me a half. I go to 0 and 1. That means I have a point there. And then at 1, 2, 1, 2. We could keep going and go out to 2. That would get us to 4 and so forth. But this blue line is representing the base graph. So this is our f of x, f of x, OK? Now, let's look at what happens when we put in a horizontal shift. Well, for this g of x is equal to 2 to the x minus 3, okay, what I want to do now is I want to bring this x minus 3 and actually set it equal to 0 and find out what that horizontal shift is. We find out that x is equal to 3. So that means we add 3 to all the x values that we have. So we take our original values here, negative 1, negative 1, plus 3. Now, I like to write this above uh, the x values because plus, it just reminds me I'm going to add something to the x values. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. So those are my new x values. And ask yourself, did anything change in the y values? Hmm? No, they didn't. So. We, there was no k value here, so it stays 0. So we keep all the y values the same, 1 half, 1, and 2. So the green will represent g of x. So here's our g of x, g of x. 2 and 1 half, so 2 goes to 1 half. 3 goes to 1, and 4 goes to, uh, four goes to 2, and if we went out to 5, it would be 4, etc. So here we have f of x was 2 to the x power, and g of x had a horizontal shift to it. All right, let's look at the next example. 
Example number two says, sketch the base graph of f of x equals 1 half to the x and g of x is equal 1 half to the x plus 2. Now pause it for a second and ask yourself, is this a growth model or a decay model and how do you know? Rewind, go back to the rules and see where is that b value? Is b value greater than 1 or what's happening with the b value? All right. You were right. It's a decay model. So here we go. Let's see what a decay model looks like. We're going to graph the, the, the decay base here. Uh, again, negative 1, 0, 1, always the base values that I use. In this case, though, when we put a negative 1 in, what does it do? It, it flips it up or makes it reciprocal, and so we get a y value of 2. 0. Anything to the 0th power is still 1, and anything to the 1st power is itself. So here we go. With the blue is the f of x model. So I go to 1, uh, or negative 1, I get 2. 0, I get 1. And 1, we get 1 half. So the blue line here represents f of x. Now, for g of x, what we've done is we've added 2 to the y values. So what we do is we take our initial y values and we simply add 2. So I put a little reminder here for myself of the 2, and that way I can see what's happening with my, with my y's. Do I change the x values? No, there was no shift up here, so I keep the x values the same. And what you'll notice is 2 plus 2 is 4, okay, 0 plus 2 is 2, uh, or excuse me, 1 plus 2 is 3. That's what happens when I look at the camera instead of the board. Um, and 1 half plus 2 is 2 and a half or 5 halves. Okay. So we plug those in. Negative 2 uh, or negative 1 went to 4. Negative 2 went up to uh, 6. And 0 went to 3. And 1 went to th 2 and a half or 5 halves. So what you should notice is that each of these did a vertical shift of two units. Okay? Two units. All the values changed by two in the Y category. We go back and look at our previous example. What happened here? All of the units moved three. Three there. Moved three there. Three units there. They all moved, uh, shifted right three units. Okay? So, in essence, that's what you're doing for these growth and decay models is looking at what are the shifts, the horizontal shifts, and, gra and graphing them accordingly. All right? Hope that helps. Review, rewind. Have a great night. Thanks. Talk to you soon.